Jesus lives on earth for 32 years and once he does not say I am God and once he does not say worship me. When I say western world is a hungry nation, what is the hunger for them? They have got all the fruits, greenery, water, all natural resources they hold by plenty. But can you imagine how rich Allah made America? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put 40% of the natural resources of the world in that country. Meaning only 5% of the human population holds 40% of the natural resources of the world. When I said hungry, in what sense did I say that? I don't mean to say hungry by food and water. They are hungry spiritually. They are hungry because they want peace. Why is it that they earn so much? Where do they spend it? All of you are living here for years now, mashallah. There may be a very few staying in front of me, the brothers and sisters who must have traveled to the UK just a week back or five days, ten days back. You people are living here for years altogether. Have you seen their pubs and their clubs? You know what is meant by a weekend in these western countries? Weekend is a time of enjoyment for them. They take every weekend as an Eid for them. Why? They say we want peace. Why do they become direct drug addicts? Why do they become drunkards? Why fornicators and adulterers? The reason is this country, this nation is hungry. Why are they hungry? They are hungry because they don't have peace. And what did Allah tell us? So now this question is Jesus Christ the God. Again I am telling you. It's not a question that I want to ask any of my Muslim brothers and sisters sitting here because I am wasting my time. I am wasting my time. I would sound illogical if I ask this question to any one of you. This question is because I want my brothers and sisters who are listening to my topic now to please walk out of the masjid. You come across any brother or sister on the road who believes Jesus to be the God. Contact him. Hello. How are you? What's your name? They can say, why do you want the name? Just tell him, do you know Allah is your God and Jesus is not the God? Start it! Start the discussion! They are your clients! They are your customers! Allah sent you in this country not to earn pounds but to make Jannah for yourself. It's an opportunity to you which many billions of Muslims around the world didn't get it. And you people think you are here for earning pounds? Allah brought you as Muslims in this country to earn pounds? Constructing Masajid. Working for Quran and Sunnah is an excellent job. There is nothing better than that. But as a Muslim, you owe and responsibility as an entire ummah umma towards these people who worship Jesus as the God. How can you convince these people that Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, is not the Almighty God? They have printed all the speech of Jesus Christ in red letters. The remaining is black. Only what Jesus said is in red. Very good. Thank you so much. You have done so good to the dais of Islam. How? Now when we open to read those red letters, in the red letter Bible, Verse number 34, Jesus is answering them and saying, you see, he is clarifying their confusion. He says, is it not mentioned in your scripture that whosoever does good things are the sons of God? Book of Exodus chapter number 4 verse number 22 is my firstborn. Book of Jeremiah chapter number 31 verse number 9, another son of God is mentioned. Book of Psalms, David, this day I have begotten you. You are my only son. In Bible, if you read, other prophets are also mentioned as sons of God. Then if you read book of Genesis chapter number 6 verse number 2 to 4, it says, The sons of God married the daughters of men. Every man is called the sons of God. Meaning, in the Bible, God has sons by tons. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Auzu billahi min shaitan al-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman al-Rahim Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu al-thamad Lam yalid wa lam yulad Wa lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad Rabbish rahli thadri wa yassir li amri Wahlul ughdatam min lisani yakuhu khali Amma baad 
all my respected elders and all my dear brothers and my sisters i welcome all of you with islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh meaning the peace mercy and blessings of almighty god allah subhanahu wa taala be on all of you alhamdulillah this is my first occasion to be in the midst of all my lovely brothers and sisters here in the united kingdom and as sheikh has introduced me as a speaker traveling to different countries to just add to that introduction i would just like to say that mashallah i was motivated by sheikh ahmed didat rahimahullah i came into this field meeting him and learning from him mashallah learning from him not in a classroom but you will be wondering i learned from him when he was totally paralyzed on the hospital bed in riyadh he could only move his eyes and i learned from him in that manner mashallah and for me dr zakir naik is my contemporary senior we belong to the same country india zakir naik belongs to mumbai i belong to hyderabad now coming to the main subject is jesus christ the god see this question is jesus christ the god i asked to any muslim except that he is in a coma he will immediately answer no jesus christ is not the god no muslim ever believes jesus christ may peace be upon him to be the god not only that we don't believe jesus christ may peace be upon him to be the god no muslim believes muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be equal to allah subhanahu wa taala no muslim believes that see i very frequently keep traveling and i tell a lot of people that the term muhammadan was coined in order to abuse us muslims why did they coin this term muhammadan see when you go to the oxford dictionary to check the meaning of the word christian the word christian means the people who worship jesus christ may peace be upon him so they wanted to abuse the muslims and they say that you see these muslims actually worship muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam auz billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim the most ignorant of the muslim on the face of the earth does not worship prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you see our our deen islam has a beauty allah subhanahu wa taala knew that there were few people who made a messenger like isa alaihi salam to be equal to allah or called him isa alaihi salam himself as the god so what allah did is he gave a beautiful methodology to this beautiful ummah of the muslims that you don't make this mistake while loving your prophet prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is that five times a day from every masjid on the face of the earth the muazzin reminds ashhadu anna muhammadur rasulullah indicating that you see you bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is only a messenger of allah he is not the son of allah he is not the brother of allah he is not the father of allah he is not equal to allah he is a rasulullah meaning he is only the messenger of allah so that in exaggerating the love for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never do the mistake that the christians did earlier so this question is jesus christ the god I put many of my Muslim brothers and sisters here. Oh, please! Why did you take that topic? We know Jesus is not the God. I took that topic in order to give my brothers and sisters a tip. What is that tip? See, I want to make you accommodated with the fact that you people are staying in a nation <coughs> which is hungry to know the truth about the God. It's a hungry nation. The Western world is a hungry nation. entire western world i am telling you why do i say they are a hungry nation see out of that hunger have you ever observed a human being who is too hungry he is very hungry he doesn't get the right food to eat for survival he just picks up he picks up anything that he gets and that is what the quran said surah baqarah surah number 2 ayat number 173 surah maida surah number 5 ayat number 3 surah anam surah number 6 ayat number 145 surah nahl surah number 16 ayat number 15 allah subhanahu wa taala forbid for us four things allah said forbidden to you are the dead meat the flowing blood of an animal the swine the pork and any food on which any name except the name of allah has been invoked but you see under circumstances where you fear you will die even the haram is permitted to you why because you are too hungry and you need to survive when i say western world is a hungry nation what is the hunger for them they have got all the fruits greenery water all natural resources they hold by plenty you will be surprised to know that america 
is a country that has a total population of the world in percentage as only 5. 5% 5 of the total world population lives in the United States of America. But can you imagine how rich Allah made America? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put 40% of the natural resources of the world in that country. Meaning only 5% of the human population holds 40% of the natural resources of the world. When I said hungry, in what sense did I say that? I don't mean to say hungry by food and water. They are hungry spiritually. They are hungry because they want peace. Why is it that they earn so much? Where do they spend it? All of you are living here for years now, mashallah. There may be a very few staying in front of me, the brothers and sisters who must have traveled to the UK just a week back or five days, ten days back. You people are living here for years altogether. Have you seen their pubs and their clubs? You know what is meant by a weekend in these western countries? Weekend is a time of enjoyment for them. They take every weekend as an Eid for them. Why? They say we want peace. Why do they become direct drug addicts? Why do they become drunkards? Why fornicators and adulterers? The reason is this country, this nation is hungry. Why are they hungry? They are hungry because they don't have peace. And what did Allah tell us? You Allah. cannot have peace except by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want peace, you need to remember your creator. Except in the remembrance of creator, there is no other way for you to have peace. And the creator almighty God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed that you see Surah Nisa Surah number 4, ayat number 36. Surah Nisa Surah number 4, ayat number 48. Surah Nisa Surah number 4, ayat number 116. Allah says, if my servants, my male or female servant, they come on the day of judgment in front of me with sins as huge as from the earth touching the heaven. For whomever I will, I will forgive them. For whomever I will, I will forgive them. But the only sin I will not forgive them is the sin of committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is shirk? In short terminology, Shirk means to associate partners with Allah in his person, with Allah in his names and attributes, with Allah in his worship. If anybody attributes anyone as a partner equal to Allah in his person, in his names and attributes and worshipping Allah, that is Shirk. And Allah says, Shirk I will absolutely not forgive. According to a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim, our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will ask one of the servants of Allah Allah will ask one of the man or a woman Allah will say suppose today I hand you over all the treasures of the universe Allah is going to tell a male or a female servant that today suppose I hand you over I make you the master of the treasures of the entire universe and then I ask you that are you ready to give that back to me to enter my Jannah? What will you do? So the servant will say, Wallah, oh Allah, without a second thought, immediately we will give away anything you ask today. Anything in our possession, we will immediately hand over to you. Allah says, the entire universe, you will hand it over to me. The servant will say, entire universe we will hand over to you. Then Allah will say, Alas, what happened to you? I asked only one simple thing when you lived on this earth. I just said, don't commit shirk with me. Take my jannah from me. You didn't listen to me. So now this question is, Jesus Christ the God. Again, I'm telling you, it's not a question that I want to ask any of my Muslim brothers and sisters sitting here because I'm wasting my time. I am wasting my time. I would sound illogical if I ask this question to any one of you. This question is because I want my brothers and sisters who are listening to my topic now to please walk out of the masjid you come across any brother or sister on the road who believes Jesus to be the God, contact him, hello, how are you? What's your name? If they say, why do you want the name? Just tell him, do you know Allah is your God and Jesus is not the God? Start it! Start the discussion! They are your clients! They are your customers! Allah sent you in this country not to earn pounds, but to make Jannah for yourself. It's an opportunity to you which many billions of Muslims around the world didn't get it. And you people think you are here for earning pounds? Allah brought you as Muslims in this country to earn pounds? Constructing masajid. Working for Quran and Sunnah is an excellent job. There is nothing better than that. 
but as a Muslim you owe a responsibility as an entire umma, umma towards these people who worship Jesus as the God. How can you convince these people that Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, is not the Almighty God? So you see, if I keep quoting my Quran, I say the Quran says this, the Quran says that, the Quran says this, the Quran says that. So the Christian says, the Quran says this, you keep it to yourself. The Quran says that, you keep it to yourself. Let me see what my Bible says, what my Bible says. And do you know when I came here, and in other places, when I traveled to the USA, Australia, New Zealand, all these places, common things our Muslim brothers were saying to me. He said, you know Imran Bhai, these Christian missionaries, Brother Imran, they come to our homes, especially on a Sunday. They knock the door. Hello, can we have some time from you? Can we come in? Can we sit down? And the Muslim brothers, you see, mashallah, our Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam was a great personality. He was very hospitable to anybody who knocked the door for him at his house. So we would immediately say, Ahlan was Ahlan Yaqi, please come in. Yeah, brother, please come in. Here, sister, please come in. You'll ask your wife, you'll ask your sister. You see, there is a sister has come. So she sits very politely. She asks, oh, hello, how are you? You have children. She plays around, makes them amused. Then she says, oh, what do you do? Okay, you're in UK, you're from Pakistan. She says something about Pakistan. She says something about India, makes you very happy. You feel, oh, such a good, nice person I'm meeting. And then she or he starts the discussion. Uh, you see, actually, we brought some books for you. We are very worried about you. You are our neighbors. You are our human brothers and sisters. We need to tell you that your salvation lies in believing that Jesus died for your sins. So now the Muslim there, he quietly listens. Why does he listen? Because he thinks, oh, after all, that's my guest. How can I abuse my guest? Okay, let her tell. Let him say. And they speak and they speak and they speak and they say, okay, see, now we are going. We will come back again on the next Sunday. So this Muslim, okay, okay, and the person leaves, the girl leaves. Am I lying? Doesn't this happen to you here? It's a shame. It's a shame on you. How many doors did you knock to talk about Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Did you knock a single door? You didn't. Look at them. They are coming with the battle to knock your heads and your brains. They are using you as doormats. They have got fresh customers for them. You travel to this country, they made you learn English in their accent. They didn't give you the visa if you didn't learn that English. Why? They were happy, let him come. Visa for his family, let them come. Let us work out on them to make them Christians. What did you do to work as Muslims? We lost our faith in Allah. Is this our Iman? Look at our Nabi Karim Wasallam and the Sahaba. When the Prophet Wasallam in Khutbatul Vida, he said, it is compulsory for you to convey my message to those who are not present here. 140,000 Sahaba standing in the ground. And how many Sahaba were buried in Saudi Arabia? Can anybody give me a guess, a rough figure? How many graves of the Sahaba are there in Saudi Arabia today? 10 to 12,000. 12, I'm asking, where did the remaining 130,000 Sahaba disappear? Where did they go? They understood the message of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wherever they turned their face, the same direction they went away to convey Tawheed and Risalat of Prophet Muhammad You go to your home, you come back to the masjid. You go to your office, you come to the masjid. You go to your home, you come to the masjid. I'm asking man, what do you do for Tawheed and Risalat from here? These people are saying that Jesus is the God, He is the Son of God. Nothing happens to you. You understand what they are trying to say? They are trying to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala auz billahi minash shaitan rajeem he had intercourse with mother Mary and Jesus was born to Allah as the God as the, as the son of God nothing happens to you with that what has happened to us so how can you convince this fellow you tell him fine I will not talk to you from the Quran you are saying Jesus is the God where did you get it see my bible says that in my Bible it is mentioned. Where is it mentioned in the Bible? So they come to you. Popular quotations they have got. Popular quotations. They quote Gospel of John, Gospel of Mark, Gospel of Matthew. They quote Gospel of Luke. Everything they quote, listen to them. One or two questions. Memorize the questions. Simple questions to ask. Allah says in the glorious Quran to us Muslims. In Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 111. See, easy to remember. One, one, one. Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 111. What is the Ayat? لَنْ يَدْخُلِ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُدَوْا نَسَارًا 
they say wakalu and they say none of you will enter into the jannat unless you become a jew or a christian they are saying that allah is saying the same they say if you want jannat the kingdom of heaven you need to become a jew or a christian wakalu la yadkhul al jannata illa man kana huda wa nasara tilka amaniyum bakwas ki baatein they are talking vanity they are talking stupid things kul you say to them now don't be quiet when they say that don't be quiet kul you say to them ha to burhan ko min kuntum sa dekhin if you are truthful in what you speak give the evidence for your speech from where did you get that what will they do they open the bible to you our muslim brothers and sisters when they open the bible to you after they go you laugh <laughs> he was reading the bible i don't believe in the bible is that enough is that enough it's not enough why allah subhanahu wa taala said don't act like fools don't make fool of yourself if they spoke bible to you actually you were meant to speak quran before they spoke the bible to you why didn't you speak the quran to them why didn't you speak the hadith of nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam to them how did you wait for them to speak the bible to you so if you didn't do that still i'm giving you tips to speak to them now ask them to show from the bible one statement of jesus christ where jesus said i am god or where he said worship me see when i was discussing this with a christian the christian came with a very beautiful explanation to me he said you see mr imran the god does not need to say that i am the god or worship me you see does the president of america president obama go to every house to say i am president obama i am the president of america beautiful explanation yes the president doesn't do that does the prime minister of Imra, england cameron does he come to your home to knock and say i am the prime minister of england he doesn't do that beautiful explanation so why will the god go and say i am the god so i told him it's a good explanation but it's a foolish explanation it appears good how the reason is president obama will not do that because who made president obama the obama the people so the people already know that he is the president of america because they made him the president of america we didn't make allah subhanahu wa taala allah made us and if the god is on earth god has to present his bona fide to say i am the god jesus lives on earth for 32 years and once he does not say i am god and once he does not say worship me why is it so jesus christ may peace be upon him in the bible they had they hold today he speaks so many statements which are exactly opposite to the nature of allah subhanahu wa taala to the nature of the almighty god you need to do small bits of homework you do that homework believe me i am really telling you wallah i am telling you if once you start doing this homework and speaking to the non muslim see the people who take drugs they become addict the addiction what is the addiction so the psychiatrist today tell us there is a portion in our brain that portion gets stimulated when that portion gets stimulated you are in a different world altogether now the same portion is active when you do anything that pleases you sexual pleasure you know according to the latest scientific research when a person gives in charity when you give khairat zakat the science tells us today it's exactly the same brain portion that becomes activated stimulated and gives you the pleasure and satisfaction you are satisfied you give khairat you feel very satisfied subhanallah i have given i have helped somebody that satisfaction that is coming to you is because of the same portion that gets activated when a person is taking drugs or alcohol the difference is one one part when you do allah is pleased the other part you do allah is not pleased one allah forbid the other allah permitted you do this one you get satisfaction plus sawab you do the other one you get temporary satisfaction but the azab so now when you speak about this to the christian and you talk to him and convince him that allah is the god you get addicted to doing dawa after that inshallah start in inshallah will you or will you not inshallah so ask this christian where is it mentioned in the bible if he can't answer you open the bible to tell him there is one statement of jesus acha i'll tell you something about red lettered bible how many of you know a red lettered bible do you know mashallah man brother knows it the red lettered bible is a new publication of the bible they help us muslim dais how did they help us so in the red lettered bible they say they have printed all the speech of jesus christ in red letters the remaining is black only what jesus said is in red very good thank you so much 
you have done so good to the dais of Islam. How now when we open to read those red letters in the red letter Bible in Gospel of John chapter number five verse number thirty, Jesus Christ may peace be upon him. According to their own Bible says, I can of my own self do nothing. Does God need anybody's help? God doesn't need anybody's help to do anything. What is Jesus saying? I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my will but the will of the Father who has sent me. Jesus is saying, by myself, I do nothing. As I hear, whatever wahi comes to me, based on that wahi, I give judgments to the people, and the judgments I give to the people are perfect. Because it is not from me, but from the God who created all of us. So when you quote this, they immediately see, see, see what is Jesus saying? Is he calling the God Father? That means he's the Son of God. If Jesus is calling God the Father, he is the Son of God. So you need to educate these people today that you see in the court of law. You understand what is the court of law? The High Court, the Supreme Court. In the court of law, the solicitors, the attorneys. The people in the court they call the judge as "Oh my Lord." When they say "Oh my Lord" to the judge, do we understand that Lord means He is the God? No person understands that when a person is calling the judge as "Oh my Lord," it means that judge is the God. Everybody knows it's a usage of language. In the judicial language, the judge honorably is referred as Lord. At the time of Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. At the time of Musa alayhi salam, at the time of Dawood alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam, the people used to call God as Abba, our father, Abbi, my father. That was a common usage. So these Christians they say, you see, they are calling the God as the Father. Jesus is saying, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my will, but the will of the Father who has sent me. See, he is calling God the Father. So again, you need to educate them. Find first of all that explanation that father, the word was used by several people at that time. Secondly, the same confusion happened to the Jews of the time of Jesus Christ. My peace be upon him. What was the confusion to the Jews? You see, the Jews they were very strong in their faith. Even today, they are extremists in their faith. The Jews at that time were very the Orthodox Jews. Everything they want to do according to the Tanakh, the Talmud, the Misnah, their books, their scripture. So they said, "You see, how is Isa born? Isa ibn Maryam is born without a father. That means now Billah, he is Ibn Zina. The Jews called him Ibn Zina, the son of Zina. Astaghfirullah alazim. And the Christians started calling him Ibn Allah. Astaghfirullah alazim. Now what did the Jews say? So the Jews said that this person who does not have a father, he is born without a father. How can this person be the messenger of God?" He's cheating others. He's blaspheming, and you see this person is calling God the Father. So, if you read Gospel of John, chapter number ten, verse number thirty, Jesus said, "I and my Father are one." The Christians quote this. You see, Jesus and God are same. Jesus is saying, "I and my Father are one." Verse number thirty-one, Gospel of John, chapter number ten. The Jews picked up the stones to hit at Jesus. Verse number thirty-two, Gospel of John, chapter number ten. Jesus asks them, "Why do you hit at me?" Do I not show you the good things in the name of the Father who has sent me? Verse number thirty-three, Gospel of John, chapter number ten. They reply, they say, we do not hit at you for the good things you show in the name of the God, but we hit at you because you blaspheme that you are the Son of God. You understood what I am trying to say? The Christians today are calling him Son of God. When he said God is the Father, the Jews wanted to hit at him. They were saying, why are you calling God the Father? Verse number thirty-four. Jesus is answering them and saying, "You see, he is clarifying their confusion. He says, 'Is it not mentioned in your scripture that whosoever does good things are the sons of God?' He is saying, 'What's new? If I am calling God the Father, if I am saying I am the Son of God, that is what is mentioned in your scriptures. Everybody knows it. So you see, Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. He was clarifying the misconception of the Jews and telling them." That you see in your scriptures itself, it is mentioned that whoever does good work are the sons of God. Book of Exodus, chapter number four, verse number twenty-two. Eve is my firstborn. Book of Jeremiah, chapter number thirty-one, verse number nine. Another son of God is mentioned. Book of Psalms, 
डेविड दिस डे आई हैव बी गॉटन यू यू आर माई ओनली सन इन बाइबल इफ यू रीड अदर प्रोफिट आर ऑल्सो मैं सन्स ऑफ गॉड देन इफ यू रीड बुक ऑफ जेनेसिस चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स वर्स नंबर टू टू फोर इट सेज द सन्स ऑफ गॉड मैरिड द डॉटर्स ऑफ मैन एवरी मैन इज कॉल्ड द सन्स ऑफ गॉड मीनिंग इन द बाइबल गॉड हैज सन्स बाई टंस so jesus christ is saying where am i different i'm speaking the same language that you speak why do you want to hit at me so the christians today have misunderstood the same thing and they believe jesus to be the son of god they forget to realize that allah subhanahu wa taala very very strongly reacts in the quran on this issue and we muslims have also forgotten that see shirk is of several kinds a person back in india if he lives in india he will know that in india the majority people believe in a religion called hinduism and you will be surprised how many how many idols do they worship can anybody guess as different gods 330 million 330 million idols they worship as different gods can you imagine that figure and that is shirk but do you know that shirk that they are doing is not as serious as the shirk the christian is doing who says that it's not me it's not a maulana it's not a sheikh it's not a makki or a madani alim it's the quran of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the quran of allah shirk is the worst but the worst of all allah says in surah maryam surah number 19 ayat number 88 to 92 wa qalu takhadha rahman walada and they say that the rahman has be gotten a son has given birth to a son called jesus christ nauz billah laqad ja'itum shay'an idda it's the dirtiest thing that anybody can speak about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how dirty is it allah says takadu samawati yatafattar namin if we give the sense of what they are saying to the sky the sky will burst upon them the heaven will burst upon them wa tanchaqil ardu if we give it to this earth it will split asunder and bury them alive wa tanchaqil ardu tanchakilar do taqirul jibal hidda and if we give it to the mountains the mountains will blow in utter ruin and the holy rahmani walada they dare to say that jesus is the son of god and you know our muslims living here what do they do they don't mind saying happy christmas on a 25 december astaghfirullah it's shame it's a shame and we have some fellow who goes to the accent to celebrate the christmas by cutting a cake on the television channel and he is a popular scholar astaghfirullah alazim allah is saying they are saying that i have begotten a son do you as muslims understand what they mean if they abuse your mother your father will you be quiet do you love allah more than your mother and father then how can you be quiet why don't you tell them wallah please don't say that i can't take it i am a muslim i can't take that but the nothing happens to the muslim because the your pounds you are earning here has kept your mouth shut that pound will throw you into jahannam if you don't speak about allah's tawhid allah subhanahu wa taala made very clear who is allah subhanahu wa taala in surah ikhlas surah number 112 ayat number 1 to 4 see these are subjects that require a lot of time but i need to respect the organizers mashallah i am very grateful to them for giving me a fair opportunity to speak to all of you i wish that this trip be, this trip is my beginning inshallah and allah keeps my doors open for dawah to the non muslims here with with association of all my lovely brothers and sisters inshallah allah says in surah ikhlas surah number 112 ayat number 1 to 4 bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul say to them huwa allahu ahad he is allah the only one allahu samad he is independent he is as samad meaning he doesn't need anybody but that doesn't complete as samad as samad means he doesn't need anybody but everyone besides allah need allah subhanahu wa taala as samad lam yalid wa lam yulad he has no parents he doesn't give birth to any children walam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad and there is no one like allah subhanahu wa taala this is the beautiful definition of allah and this is the allah we believe in to be the creator of the universe so anyone besides allah cannot be the god and it's your job my job to communicate that allah alone is our god and that is the definition of allah subhanahu wa taala with that i would like to conclude my talk akhir dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin walam salam Charles, Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution. How do we respond to that? And uh, because people are thank you very much. I got your question. But that is a very genuine question, and this is a question 
which has put a lot of Muslims into concern in Western societies. He said back in the schools, not just the Western schools, back in India and Pakistan, when we read the science subject, we were told that man was evolved from monkeys and apes. So how can we tell them that this is wrong, we have been created? You see, as far as the creation of Adam as the first man on earth goes, Quran, for Muslims, it stands. Surah Bakra, Surah number 2, ayat number 30 to 38, these are the eight ayat that for the first time speak about the creation of Adam as When you read the Bible, for the Jews and the Christians, they believe the same thing. They say Adam is the first man to be created. Darwin's theory, what is Darwin's theory? See, Darwin belonged to this country. In 1856 and 57, he went on a voyage. On that voyage, he found certain observations of the birds, looking at certain birds on different islands. He came back to write a letter to his friend Thomas. In the letter he says, Thomas, while I was traveling at different islands, I found birds of same species but with minor changes in the beaks, the size of the beaks. Based on this observation, I feel that evolution happened. And then he went on to write another book. And in that book, he declared that man was evolved from apes. What does the science say about that? The science doesn't believe it. The science doesn't agree it. Why? According to the evolutionists, those who believe in the theory of evolution, evolution cannot happen without mutation. And mutation, according to science, is a destructive process. It's not a constructive process. It's a destruction. But they give the example of certain species. They forget to realize that mutation didn't happen. You try to prove it's a mutation. Scientifically, it's not proved. Pro see, time doesn't, again, permit me to go in detail. In brief, I'm saying, they, they will give you certain examples. Saying, no, no, you see, because of mutation, this species came, this species came, this species came. That is, again, a theory. They have no proof for it. What is the conclusion? The conclusion by the science is, there was a mathematical calculation done. How, what does evolution mean? Change in the genetic cycle. In the genes, a change should come. So what is the change? So the science says, mathematically, from amoeba, amoeba is one cellular organism. From amoeba, anything to become multicellular, the genetic codes, the change in the genetic codes is 1 into 10 raised to the power of 324. What does that mean? It means in one second, your genes should rotate at a speed of 1, 324 zeros after that. If that happens, there will be a big blast because of friction. It can't happen. According to science, amoeba cannot evolve into the minutest multicellular. Then they try to calculate what from ape to human being. So the calculation is 1 into 20 raised to the power of 524. Impossible according to me. I know it's very technical for many people you don't understand because of the time restriction I can't go into detail according to mathematics evolution is impossible to happen more than 100 Nobel Prize winning scientists They have thrown the theory of Darwin into garbage How did it pick up in these countries at the time Darwin lived actually there was a big fight between king and the church fathers and the pastors for everything the king wanted to do the church would say Please ask us before making a law. We will say whether it is according to Bible or not. This tussle was there. The moment Darwin said this, the king started to support Darwin. You know Web Web Webminster graveyard, you heard about it in London? It's one of the most royal graveyard. A common person cannot, a Tom, Dick and Harry cannot be buried there. But do you know Darwin is buried there? Why? The king was supporting. Any country, anywhere in the world, if the king supports something, it gets, gets a big support now. So because of that, Darwin was supported by the king. The theory was propounded and made to be propagated because it was going against the Bible. They continued with it. Today there are many Christian and Jewish organizations in the USA who are pressurizing the American government to remove the subject of Darwin's theory from the books. So Darwin's theory scientifically is impossible to happen. It's only a theory, it's not a fact. Darwin's theory is only a theory. I hope I answered that question. Sister has asked a very important question. She said that when we tell the Jew and the Christian that your Torah and the Injil and the Zubur that you quote to us are not originals, the Christian and the Jew, they immediately say the Quran you quote to us, even this Quran is not original. Sister Mashallah, if uh, you could wait for some time, very soon on the YouTube you are going to get a debate. Recently, Mashallah, I had a debate in Australia with Samuel Green. Many Muslim brothers and sisters may not know about Samuel Green. There are three Christian missionaries, Simon from USA, Jay Smith from UK and Samuel Green from Australia. 
they made a website which is the worst website against Islam in the world. And the name of the website is answeringislam.com. I don't know how many of you know about this. It's one of the filthiest websites. The movie that was made has a lot of material taken from this website actually. So this website, there are three authors. Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah and duas from all my lovely brothers and sisters throughout the world. I had a debate in Sydney in August 2012, just before Ramzan. And mashallah, by Allah's grace, he was crushed. The Christians, when they went out, they said, Samuel's career is over now, mashallah. My plan not to come to England is basically, mashallah, in the future, actually, when I was saying that, of a big program outside, my future plan is to debate J. Smith in England, inshallah. And I hope all of you will support me for that, inshallah. That's my bigger plan, mashallah. So now, this Samuel Green was going to everybody to say, you see, the Quran Muslims read is not the original Quran. The Quran given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was burnt away by Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So what they read now is the Quran written by Usman radiallahu ta'ala Now this answer sister, very honestly it requires a big time to answer. I absolutely cannot go much in detail. Very briefly I will tell you something. I will tell you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says. Allah says in Surah Nisa Surah number 4 ayat number 82. Afala ayat adabbarun al-Quran. Do they not read the Quran with care? Walau kana min indi ghairillah Had the Quran been from anyone except Allah Labajadhu fi ikhtilafan kasira There would have been mistakes in the Quran You tell a Jew or a Christian Show us a mistake from the Quran of any kind Grammatical mistake Mistake in the subjects the Quran talks about Mistakes in the vocabulary of the Quran Ask them to show you one single mistake from the Quran, from the Bible, only from the book of Genesis. The first, open the Bible, Old Testament, first book of Genesis, first chapter, nine mistakes, scientific mistakes. Nine scientific mistakes only in the first. How can God make mistakes? God cannot make mistakes. Now coming to Torah, Zubur and Injil, how was Injil given to Isa alayhi salam? Nobody knows. What is Injil? Injil is the Arabic word which translated into English means good news. And Injil, if translated into Greek, it means gospel. So, Injil Isa is mentioned in the Quran. Allah says in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayat number 46 and 47, and Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, Ayat number 29 and 30, we gave Injil to Isa alayhi salam. Injil Isa. But when you read the Bible, they have Injil Matthew, Injil Mark, Injil Luke, Injil John. What we Muslims are saying is, where is the Injil Isa? We don't want Injil Matthew, Injil Mark, Injil Luke, Injil John. We want Injil Isa. That is what we believe through the Quran. The Christians don't have that. The Torah given to Musa alayhi salam, sister, it's a beautiful reference. If you can just write down, you can, all of you can also remember. It's a very beautiful reference. Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the first Old Testament. See, the Bible is Old Testament, New Testament. Old Testament, those books that were given to prophets from Adam alayhi salam, till Musa alayhi salam. They are in the Old Testament. Christians and Jews both agree to it. Both then agree that the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, these are the Torah given to Musa alayhi salam. Now if that is the case, Deuteronomy is the fifth book. In the fifth book, chapter number 34, easy to remember. If you don't remember which number is the book, how many fingers do you have on your hand? Five. Remember the fifth book. When you open the Bible, the fifth book. Then chapter number 34, what comes after 3? See 34 is together. Chapter number 34, what comes after 4? Then, then, easy. All 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is coming together. Chapter number 34, verse number 5, 6 and 7. Musa alayhi salam they say is getting the book. Now in the book it is written in Deuteronomy chapter number 34, verse number 5, 6 and 7. And Moses died when he was 120 years old. And he was buried in the land of Moab. You understand what it means? How can Musa alayhi salam write himself that I died when I was 120 years old and I was buried when I was in the land of Moab? <laughs> How stupid that is? How can he himself write I died and I am buried and still he is writing the book? <laughs> Even Hollywood can't produce a movie of this kind. So you see, the Bible that they hold is not the book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we Muslims, we believe according to the Quran. Allah said in Surah Hud, Surah number 11, Ayat number 110, Surah Al Imran, Surah number 3, Ayat number 3, we gave a book to Musa alayhi salam, that is the Torah. Allah said in Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, Ayat number 55, we gave Zabur to Dawud alayhi salam. In Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, Ayat number 29 and 30, Allah said we gave Injil to Isa alayhi salam. 
to our Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah gave the Quran. Why did he reveal the Quran? Because these people tampered their books. The original is no more with them. Inshallah, if Allah gives me an opportunity, sister, next time, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, I will take a detailed subject on the difference between the Bible and the Quran, inshallah, sister. I hope I answered the question. Brother has asked the question that what is the difference between Dawah and Islam? And what is my responsibility as a Muslim to do Dawah? And what will I face? As a consequence, if I do not do Dawah and face the Lord on the Day of Judgment, face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. Basically, the word Dawah, it means invitation. <laughs> when you invite any person to Quran and Sunnah, to Islam, is Dawah. But just for a convenience of a person's understanding, some people have tried to say that Dawah means an invitation generally given to the non-Muslims and Islam means an invitation or correction of the Muslim Ummah. So, if we do not go into the technicalities of the term, Dawah includes both. Suppose there are there are born Muslims, as we have been hearing so many scholars, they believe in Quran and Sunnah, but they are committing shirk. They believe in Quran and Sunnah, but they do so many bidat. So now if you go to invite them to Quran and Sunnah, even that is, of course, Dawah. But the Dawah that we generally technically try to speak is in the concept of inviting non-Muslims to Islam, which is a priority. See, it depends upon the situations. For example, living in Pakistan, where you have a Muslim majority, living in Malaysia where you have a Muslim majority, living in Indonesia where you have a Muslim majority, where non-Muslims may be rare to find. In those countries, if you are doing the Dawah to invite the wrongly practicing Muslims to Islam, there that is the priority now. Mashallah. But in countries like India, like UK, like America, where you have an ocean of non-Muslims around you, so definitely our primary focus has to go to these people. Because at the end of the day, they are a threat to your religion and your religious teaching if you do not correctly introduce yourself to them because they have a misconception that Muslims are a threat to them they have a misconception that Islam is a threat to the West they have a misconception that Islam is a religion brought by Muhammad to oppose Christianity and Judaism so now just like to our Muslims who do not follow Islam according to Quran and Sunnah you feel them a threat why do you feel them a threat? you feel them a threat because they feel you a threat why do they feel you a threat? So they say these people are trying to reject the Aima Akram. These people are trying to reject the scholars of Islam. They are only inviting us to Quran and Hadith. So they take you a threat, you take them a threat. In a non-Muslim country, the non-Muslims are taking you a serious threat. So if you don't introduce yourself, you are at a greater danger from them. So in countries like the UK, the USA, it's very important that we reach out to the non-Muslims. This is one thing. Secondly, see, we talk so much about the Sirat of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We all very proudly, we are very honored to say that mashallah we have understood the concept that Islam means to obey Quran in accordance with the teachings of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Himself testified in the Quran in Surah Ahzab, Surah number 33, Ayat number 21, Lakad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana. The best example for mankind to follow is in the footsteps of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just imagine, just imagine a situation, a hypothetical situation. Had our Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam been with us today, had our Sahaba like Abu Bakr Siddiq, Umar, Usman and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu majmain been with us today, in such a scenario where you are one billion and another six billion human beings are those who do not know who is Allah, who do not believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who do not believe in the Quran, what do you think our Nabi and Sahaba would have done immediately? They would have surely corrected the wrongly practicing Muslims. They would have given punishments to them. They would have done so much work to get the Muslims into the right fold. But would they have stopped this cause? Because this was the primary cause. With this, the Prophet ﷺ was sent out to get the mankind into the fold of Islam. And there is always a possibility. Maybe a person who is a born Muslim may not understand Quran and Sunnah as much as a non-Muslim may understand from you. Maybe you will get a strength from outside source today. So the best part is keep doing both the work simultaneously. Wherever you get an opportunity, do it. But remember, in countries where you are surrounded by a majority, an ocean of non-Muslims, then your focus should absolutely be primarily on the non-Muslims and then the Muslims. As I said, in Arab countries, Middle East countries. See, there inviting a non-Muslim, the non-Muslim there is helpless. He will not oppose you with force. Suppose you meet a Christian in Saudi Arabia and tell him, you see, Jesus is not the God, what will he do? He will listen to you. So in such cases, the Muslims who are there, who are not following Quran and Sunnah, focus is there. 
But in countries like this, where you are exposed to vulnerable situations, you have to be very smart, you have to be genius. Udu ila sabili rabbi ka bil hikmah. Invite all the people to your way of your Lord with hikmat. What is the hikmat? You have a threat from outsider, immediately exposed to the outsider, what is Quran and what is this. And maybe Allah will provide our jamaat, our people, the strength from these groups to make you more strong, inshallah. Yeah, brothers asked that now these people are talking about the concept of we getting created by chance. They do not believe in God and now they are trying to experiment through the God particle and trying to prove that it is this God particle that is responsible for the creation. In the coming days, how can we counter them? See, first thing very important for us, as again some of the scholars, the previous speech you were hearing, he was talking about the Iman on the Quran. Uh, after the Alif Lam Mim, the very first ayat in Surah Baqarah is after Alif Lam Mim, Zalik al Kitabul Arebafi. We have absolutely no doubt in the book being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No doubt whatsoever. I may, I may, I may at any given point of time at least think twice whether this person is my father or not. For as Quran is concerned, Wallah, there is no way I ever thought that this is not from Allah. I believe in the Quran. I believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah more than anything else in the universe. So this Quran is the scale. It's the scale to measure the things. So tomorrow they come, you see science always keeps taking U-turns. When I was in school, how many planets are there? So we were taught nine planets. Now it has become eight. Tomorrow it may become eleven. Then it may become seven. So the science keeps U-turns. But Quran has no turns. It's straight. It's a straight scale to measure everything, mashallah. So the Quran has made it very clear. What did Allah say about the creation of the universe? Allah said in Surah Anbiya, Surah number 21, Ayat number 30. Avalam yaral ladhina kafaru annas samawati wal ad. Do not the disbelievers look at the heavens and the sky. They were joined together as one unit of creation and we clove them asunder. We blasted them off. So now from the God particle actually when they are going to experiment, they are trying to prove that universe came through Big Bang. They are not going against this. So the moment that experiment will be proven, mashallah it will be proven that Quran is perfect. Quran is clearly saying it was a nebula and there was a big blast. So mashallah they are coming in compatibility with the Quran. So inshallah you see as far as scientific theories are concerned Theories may several times contradict the Quran But the established facts of the science can wallah never contradict the Quran Why? Because this is from the one who created the universe And he is the best to know what he has created mashallah I have answered that question Yeah brother has asked a very very important question In fact the most important question related to my subject of the talk today uh, In the afternoon He has said that Many Muslims living in the western countries, they very conveniently, on a 25th December, they very conveniently, conveniently they say, Happy Christmas. Or if the Christian greets you, Happy Christmas, they are not hesitated to reply and say, same to you. So they try to share that joy of Christmas with the Christian community. In such a case, what is my clarification to this? See, mashallah. Yeah, Br brother has said, would it be a bad manner if I don't reply? See, to understand this part, I, I may sound a little harsh, but it may give you a right reasoning to understand why I am saying that. See, suppose some person comes to me and he says, you know, this boy living in the next door to you, he is a boy born to your mother from my father. And he says, today is the birthday of that boy, please come to my house. What do I? No, no, no. Please try to understand what I am trying to say. This guy is telling me that the boy next door has been born to your mother from my father and today is his birthday. Please come and celebrate the birthday with me. Now what do you expect me to do? And these people are saying, Allah has begotten a son from Maryam alayhi salam, now's billah. How can a Muslim say happy Christmas then? What manners are we talking of? Manners is to defend Allah's Izzah. The biggest manners is to defend Allah's Izzah. And if you can compromise on this, then why are you making a hue and cry of the movie against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who is more important? Allah or Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, let me complete. Don't debate with me. Let me complete. I got your question. This is a common question I get everywhere. Let me complete it. I'm just giving a point, coming with a background to you to answer that to the people who do that. See, if you don't love Allah, then why are you reacting to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Our Iman is incomplete if we don't love Allah more than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
for us allah is first and then muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you truly love allah your reaction should be much more severe when they say allah has begotten his son nous billah and who is clarifying that allah himself is saying wa qalu taqadda rahmanu walada they are saying rahman has begotten a son laqad jaitum shay'an the dirtiest thing that anybody can speak if i give the sense to the heaven the earth the mountains they will just just close us and they will fall down in utter ruin they will bury them alive and the all rahmani wala they said rahman has begotten a son now what can as a muslim i can do see suppose if a christian if i would have been in a country like this if the christian came to me i would say what is 25 december you're saying happy christmas for what reason my first question would be for what reason he says you see jesus is born i would ask him who is jesus if he says oh you don't know jesus christ so i'm going to say i know jesus christ but i know him as isa the rasul of allah subhanahu wa taala i know him as isa ibn maryam isa the son of maryam alaihi salam the messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala are you talking about that isa alaihi salam if he says yes then i am going to say i don't know about his birthday if he says no i am going to ask him then which jesus are you talking of if he says i am talking about the jesus christ whom you believe as messenger of allah and whom i believe as the son of god the very first thing i will ask him is please prove me from your bible that he is the literal son of god second question prove me that he was born on 25th december third if i live in england i am going to tell him that in england till 19th century celebration of christmas was banned by the king there was no celebration of christmas in england the only most powerful christian country 19th century you don't have a christmas celebration in england it was a crime you don't know it from where did they get it 25th december from where did you get it that date itself is against the biblical teaching what does the bible say in the gospel of john chapter number 2 if you keep reading it it says when they saw the stars in the sky the shepherds they were gazing their sheep in the night ask any christian who has a little knowledge of geography where was isa alaihi salam born isa alaihi salam was born in bethlehem bethlehem geographically falls in the northern hemisphere and in the northern hemisphere if you go to bethlehem today in the month of december there is a snowfall now if you go sheep are being gazed in the snowfall the sky is so open that they can see the stars you are going against your bible the biblical version is very close to the quranic ayat when sheikh was reading from surah maryam alaihi salam surah maryam when allah subhanahu wa taala said to maryam alaihi salam when maryam alaihi salam told allah oh allah i am feeling hungry what was she told shake the date tree when when are the dates grown in the arab regions in the summer not in december biblical stars are there summer not winter according to the latest software that they developed to find out trace back that stars they saw they wanted to trace the arrangement of the stars back so they say that date goes to 15th june june is the month of summer in the arabian regions it is summer in bethlehem not winter coming to 25th december from where did you get it where they got it is you people living in england if you people go to ireland you know even in ireland today i have been to ireland i was told any time the sun comes up in the sky officers are given holiday they come to enjoy sun 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 they are desperate for the sun so in the olden days there was a dogma what was the dogma there is something called summer solstice and winter solstice what is a winter solstice the day is the shortest the night is the longest when does it fall between 21 to 27 december it falls they used to believe that 24th december the sun will be engulfed by evil spirits so what they did is they thought tomorrow sun doesn't come out again on 25th december when the sun rose they used to the pagans they used to celebrate the birthday of the sun god which this community changed it to the birthday of son of god so all these questions you can ask when he comes to you from where did they get the santa claus santa claus was saint nicolas of usa a catholic person why did they call it santa claus because the protestants cannot accept a catholic pastor how did he get that dress the coca cola advertisement in 1964 presented santa claus with that dress since then he became famous with that dress so this is how they have adopted christmas tree there is no mentioning of a christmas tree in the bible christmas bells no mentioning of the christmas bells in the bible did any of the disciple of jesus christ ever celebrate a christmas nothing did any of the followers later celebrate no saint paul did he celebrate a christmas no
from where did they get it? So ask all these questions when they come to you, inshallah. <laughs>